Columbia. Again, this is a view of the satellite. Well, if it had to break, it did it in the right place. Columbia and the satellite now 77 nautical miles apart. Again, that call reporting that uh, the crew can see the tether and uh, see the satellite. To, but it's beautiful. This view uh, showing. Uh, satellite. Again, uh, just moving into sunrise. 81 nautical miles now from Columbia. Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? Well, the long line is uh, is a tether, um, and uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us, and uh, it's uh, illuminated by the sun at such low angles. So this is just a lot of stray light and it's getting washed out uh, quickly, but uh, Claude is trying to do a, a quick, uh, good job here adjusting the cameras. Copy that. You know that description by the crew, this is uh, the tether in the satellite. Uh, the satellite with 12, approximately 12 miles of tether still attached to it. Columbia and the satellite to now just passing over the west coast of uh, northern Africa. The two spacecraft are now 90 nautical miles apart. Controllers for the satellite uh, did have communications uh, with it uh, during the close pass uh, between Columbia and the satellite. Columbia Houston, that's a much better view, uh, a lot more contrast visible. And how wide uh, does that tether appear to be? We, we see, it seems to resemble a, a much wider strand than we'd expect. Can you describe which way the, uh, the satellite is visible on that uh, strand?
satellite uh, now. 100 nautical miles. Charlie, completely unzoomed, and uh, you see the full extent of the pattern. I try to adjust the focus, but I can't get better than that. Okay, Clyde. Thank you. Let's zoom in now. Exactly what she's doing on the inside. Okay. Right now, the handle is installed with the tab in the unlocked position. I'm going to rotate the tab to the locked position now if you're ready. We're ready. Okay, we are fully seated in the locked position. Okay, Tammy, we didn't see any uh, any motion on the outside. Uh, if you would, go ahead and uh, move it back to the unlocked. Okay, I'm pulling back to the unlocked, and again, it's only going about uh, three-quarters of the way. will not fly flat and will not see it, as I mentioned earlier. And, and Tammy, uh, if, if you could, simultaneous with trying to put it in the unlocked position, if you would move the handle a little bit back and forth. Okay, and we can see the handle moving on the outside. Okay, and uh, is there any indication that the lock is being actuated? No, we can't. Uh, we can't see any indication of that, and, and it just may be. a bad angle and too dark. Amidst the two and a half thousand hours of NASA footage recorded by Martin Stubbs, we have seen countless examples of the spheres, the first space phenomenon. But until now, few have ever come across, least of all seen described, what has been labelled the second space phenomenon. Those that have, have been left speechless, including eminent scientists, astrophysicists and, as we have learned, highly placed figures within the Canadian Space Agency. Someone who was prepared to comment publicly after being shown less than five minutes of the footage was Guido Negro, director of the SETI radio telescope at Golden Grave Observatory in Western Australia. What, we asked, did he make of it all? Well, I was very well impressed, and not only myself, also other people that were looking at. And because this time we are not talking about footage taken off from some home movie camera, but someone that actually was flying a space shuttle, so automatically that gave us the fact that the picture must have been real, genuine. Yeah. genuine. Well, I was very well impressed. And maybe this will prove that there is something else that we are not aware of, at least. That if the footage that we saw came to be true and really are showing an alien spacecraft or something like that, I say that if there is a cover up, the, the, the people who are doing this cover up are an enemy of the entire Earth race. Because we are not children and we must know if, and we must know the truth. It doesn't matter if there are people that are not, they don't know how to handle the truth. Well, the majority of us will, and if there is a cover-up, I think it's time that the cover-up goes.